can wait wait why do you always leave as soon as i turn the camera on toby oh yeah you're here you're always ready to say hi what a good boy such a good boy toby you want to go outside i'm gonna go outside when you do a garden tour let's go oh charlie's here hey charlie yeah nice big stretches time for face kisses yep what are you coming come on toby toby we gotta go outside and do a garden tour come on let's go let's go outside yeah, let's go. Come on. Come on. Stand there and stare at me like you don't know what's going on. Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. Don't get in that pool. Toby. Toby. Don't do it. Oh, he's looking for frogs. Never mind. Can't believe it's actually already time for the last garden tour of the year. I say last. There will be more but it's just going to be different september late september is in october that's my transition time i start pulling the pottery apart getting rid of the annuals getting the plants cleaned up and ready to take back inside so the october tour looks more like a gardening bomb went on outside because it's just kind of a lot of just chaos and projects everywhere kind of like my hand flying around in front of the screen just then so this will be the last where things are somewhat intact i've already actually started the process with some things and i'm doing this tour a little bit differently than some of the others i'm filming this in the evening that's because this time of year if you've been following my channel for a few years every fall you just hear me complain constantly about how the lighting is just it just sucks in the fall time the angle of the sun it's no good and there aren't really any super cloudy days coming up to film so i thought well we'll just do things when it's a little bit dark i'll do some tonight some tomorrow when it's brighter and just make it work doesn't really matter y'all have seen it like with the august garden tour a lot of things looked a little bit better than they do now but a lot of things have grown since then and improved like over here these colocasias these are the maui gold they've already kind of started their withering process so they're starting to die back and chill out so i just need to come out here with my snippers and get that stuff cleaned up and i've reduced watering so i'm just I'm trying to kind of aid them in the process so they can go dormant and i can dig them up store them inside or i mean in a box really for the winter time but you know they don't they don't look too good they're dying off whereas other things just <laughs> they just won't stop growing and you see that this queen palm it's getting massive i didn't expect them to grow this much queen palms grow quickly I wasn't expecting them to grow this quickly. I've grown many before, but this has never been the case. I think it's just the precipitation and the weather and everything was just right for them this year, apparently, because they are, they're just, they're absolutely massive. I mean, look at this one. It's towering all the way up to the second story. It, they grew a lot. They're very happy. What you looking for? You looking for frogs? There's no frogs. There are frogs there are frogs he just he doesn't need to know he doesn't need to be looking for them like i said things are happy orchids are blooming multiple orchids there's this vanda right here and then there's another vandacious orchid that's tucked back there underneath that awesome bromeliad they're very happy we've had some cooler nights and when you have those cool nights and then the really warm daytime temperatures it really drives them into blooming so there are a lot of buds on those orchids i still haven't repotted this that needs to be a priority. I just got the lava stone and some other things I wanted to use in the mix in the mail like two days ago. So I can finally get that done, which I'm excited about. I've been talking about repotting this Monstera for, I don't know, like a year. The thing is, it's pot is too small-ish. I always say the same thing. It doesn't, like the pot size doesn't really matter that much. It's just that it's so small that I don't have any way to anchor the plant properly because it wants to attach itself and climb on something. So a new pot, I'll be able to put something bigger in there and it'll kind of be able to correct its wonky self and its crookedness. Let's add a Nydia palm planter, all of the annuals that are in here. They're just doing great, especially these heliconias that are in here. They've been doing a lot of flowering. Their leaves are kind of closed up because the temperatures have been a little bit cooler. And that's when those leaves will start to sort of clasp up. Their way of saying, hey, not happy, give me heat. They're heat loving plants. Same thing going on back here with the luteas. They're kind of going, eh, things were a little bit too cool. But things have warmed back up though. It's like 86 right now. It's maybe going to be 90 tomorrow. An absolutely beautiful day, but there won't be very many of these left. This could be the last of it for all I know. I have no idea. Just never really know what's going to happen in the fall time. Over here, my favorite croton, Mr. Freckles, or just Freckles. Looking good done a good amount of growing very happy very healthy one of the gingers up here this is a costas ginger a red button ginger is starting to put some buds up finally i was a little worried that i might not get it to bloom this year because i think i had it sitting in shade for a while 
for a while too long, but I bumped it over into some more light, so that started to put something out there. So hopefully it'll still bloom. I don't know, the ship may have sailed for this year, but there's always next year. And this over here, my favorite garden bed that I did this year, it is doing so well, too well actually. I need to come in here and prune back all of this Tritoscantia that's in there. The purple heart plants have really taken over and they're starting to choke out that lemon coral sedum. I don't know how big of a deal that's going to be because both of them are technically annuals here in zone 6a, 6b. I have had plenty of winters though where those have returned for me in the springtime. As long as it's a nice mild winter, they're planted really close to the edge of the patio there, so that can make a difference as far as keeping them warm and protected. That hard surface tends to radiate warmth back out towards things at nighttime when it's really cold during the winter, so they have some protection. I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. But it's because of that, yes, let me get to my point here, <laughs> because of that, I really should go through and kind of just shave those Tritoscantias down a little bit so that more light can get through to the lemon coral sedum because I want them to stay healthy. The healthier they are moving into fall, the more likely they are to come back next year in the springtime. This clump of gingers, these Hedichiums, they are doing very, very well. They've mostly finished blooming, but they have, I don't know, probably four or five stalks on them that are still starting to spike out. So those will still be blooming well on into October. I doubt I'll be getting any seed out of them. The hybrids, their seeds don't stay true to the parent plant, so I don't really ever bother trying to collect their seeds anyways. It's a banana clump on the corner by these lovely attractive poles. I have got to find a different place to store those. I hate looking at those against the side of the house. These got humongous this year. The biggest I have ever seen these. They're going all the way up into the windows on the second floor up there, which is a beautiful view from the bathroom to have just the tips of those banana leaves moving around the wind. Very nice. I assumed they were going to get pretty big this year just because it was a fairly mild winter and a really warm spring, but I was still surprised to get this much growth out of them considering I didn't do a ton of fertilizing. They got some compost mixed in around themselves in the springtime. They've had a few liquid fertilizings, but otherwise they nothing like most years. Most years I fertilize these plants a lot and i mean a lot because they love it bananas love fertilizer the more you fertilize them the more they just grow and grow and grow but you know that wasn't that wasn't really an option this year really delighted to see that they've done so well this clump has been here for many years and it used to only get like four to five feet tall it did that for like probably five years and then last year it got pretty big and this year it's just it's gigantic there are a couple leaves in there i need to prune out i'll go ahead and do that those are bothering me Okay, that's better. I mean, it's not a drastic change. I only cut out three leaves, but there were just those two, though, that were kind of burnt and crispy looking. I was just getting tired of looking at those. So these bananas have done very well. Their trunks are extremely big and girthy. The one back there, not this one, one right behind it that you can't even see, very thick, very hefty, thick trunks. Still not the thickest I've ever seen on my bananas, but pretty darn close. I think the biggest bananas I ever grew out here were Saba bananas. The Musa Saba, they get gigantic. They get absolutely massive. They probably got like 15 or 16 feet tall in one season. And they did that every year for like three years. And then eventually we had a bad winter and it killed them because they're more cold hardy than a lot of bananas, but they're not necessarily cold hardy enough for zone six, but pulled it off for a few years. I plan on actually trying those again if I can find them. I just haven't been able to find them for sale, at least not for a reasonable price. Over here, the little ginger garden that just got planted up this year. Things are doing pretty well over here. I potted this up, I don't know, it was just a few weeks ago, I think. It was just a couple of Sun Impatient Slimming Coral Sedums, and I tossed a Heliconia in there, and it don't really just a few weeks. It's filled out very, very nicely. Still not as much as I would have liked it to. If I had planted it earlier in the season, it would have had a nice, round, like, symmetrical shape to it, which would be more fitting for that bowl, but it's okay. It's fine. It, with only a few weeks of growing time, it's pretty good. If you remember what this looked like before, this is a pretty big improvement. And then the, what, three clumps of ginger, one there, one there, and one over here. Those are doing well, and every single one of them has been blooming. So I'm really happy about that. I wasn't sure if they were going to bloom or not this year because they got dug up in July and transplanted. That's not really an ideal time to be transplanting anything. Actually, they did pretty well. I'm surprised that they even flowered. I Honestly, I was 
thinking that they probably would die because it was just so hot when they got transplanted, but it worked out okay. Uh, next year, these should be roughly, I would say, maybe two to even three feet taller. These are the Flaming Torch Hedichiums, and they'll get six to seven feet tall, which will be really nice looking through that garden window in the house to have those great big orange flowers. I can go back and show you what the flowers look like. That might be helpful. There we go. There is one of the flowers, and you can like kind of see it through the window in there, but not really. Next year though, they'll be up and right up, just blown around the breeze right in front of that window. It's gonna be so pretty. A couple of needle palms back here. There were two planted, one there and another one that's kind of tucked away and a little bit harder to see back over here. Both put out, I think, like two new fronds since they were planted, which is pretty good. Needle palms, they grow like snails, so I was happy to see that. I wasn't expecting them to do any kind of growing at all, actually. Sort of the same with these sable miners down here, but those will grow much faster than a needle palm. They're pretty tough, cold hardy palms. It's their first winter here, so I'll protect them this year just to be safe, but eventually these will be, oh, I mean, they can get fairly tall actually. It's not like palm tree height, even though they are palm trees. Well, eventually, I would say in a few years, probably be between three and a half to four feet high with great big, pretty, somewhat glaucous colored fan-shaped leaves on them. That is assuming they make it through winter. That's always the thing. Yeah. That's why I'm going to protect them, just to be safe. Not going to hurt just to throw some mulch around them and a frost cloth on top of them. May as well. It's only going to take a few minutes and it's going to keep the plants looking even better for next year or for springtime. I'd say that's well worth the effort. Over here, my plumeria, I didn't do anything special with it, but it is finally for the first time ever budding, which I don't know why I said it like that. I've only had this for two years. <laughs> Feels like an eternity, but it's really only been a couple of years. This, I, I had a lot of my tropicals in the shade this summer, so they wouldn't have to be watered as much because, you know, there's all that stuff going on. I went ahead and I bumped this over to where it would get really bright afternoon sun, and that got some little buds going there on it. And I did, I hit it with a plumeria fertilizer that is extremely high in phosphorus, so it kind of, I cheated a little bit too. I don't know if it's cheating. Is it really cheating? A lot of plumeria growers use the plumeria fertilizers for that exact reason. But, you know, in gardening, there's always the argument that a happy plant will bloom, you don't need to use the blooming fertilizers, and you know, yeah, I get it, true. But sometimes we also get impatient and just want to see flowers. Speaking of which, you can't really see that all that well, but the Alexander palm has a spath shooting out there. A nice little flower spike. I don't I did this last year too. This is going off to a greenhouse for winter storage the week of October 15th. So I don't, it only has like two weeks to pop that thing out. So I don't know if I'll even get to see the flowers this year, but I hope so. It would be nice. They have really cool gnarly like spiraling flowers. Not even flowers, just the spikes that the flowers come out on. That looks pretty neat. So I would like to be able to see that, but again, I don't know. We will see. Definitely would help if things stay a little bit warmer in October, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I see low 40s in the forecast and like the extended forecast. That's not, that's not great for tropical plants. They're not going to enjoy that. Speaking of tropical plants, the elephant ear patch over here it grew a lot more than I thought it would in just a couple of months. This, remember these things didn't even get planted up till like, ugh, I don't know, mid-July, early July, something like that. So they they did their thing, which I'm happy about. I was a little bit concerned that since they got planted so late into the season that they may not put up enough growth to go ahead and get their nutrients back down into their bulb for winter storage. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say, but I'm confident that these have grown enough. They'll be okay going dormant for the winter time. They should be just fine. Same thing back here with the alocasias. This is a portora. It's one of my favorites. It's so shiny and glossy and it has those nice purple ribs along the undersides of the leaves and such a delight when it comes to winter care because i just cut the foliage off dig it up and store it someplace dark cool and dry for the winter time i don't mess with it bring it back out in the spring replant it boom it gets growing again the banana cannas they're doing wonderfully let me come to the other side of the gate actually okay Stay there, Toby. Toby, uh-uh, you stay there. You know the rules. You're not supposed to go past the line. You stay there. Here's the entryway to the backyard. Those banana cannas on each side, you can see it easier if I close the gate. I'm sorry, Toby, don't take it personally. So next year, hopefully, these will each be about two or three feet even higher with that gorgeous reddish, burgundy, bronzy green foliage. For the most part this year, they're done with their height. Once they start to put out their flower stalks, they're not going to get any taller. But this is just from, again, just a few months growth. It looks really great. Why did the pool just turn off? 
it just turned back on. I don't know. Something else that needs to be fixed. Go figure. There's a ghost in my filter. And the other gingers that are planted over here along this pathway, they're still blooming. And looking fantastic, too. I love walking through here and having these big, bold leaves that are not in focus. There we go. You just saw them. You know what I'm talking about. Having those big leaves and then the ginger coming up through here. It's just, it's a pleasant way to enter into things. And of course, the bikini teeny and colocasia is there just doing what they always do. Just being plant thugs, taking over the entire garden. I haven't messed with these this year. I actually have pulled a bunch up because they were taking over too much, but otherwise, no. Nah. They're pretty self-sustaining. They've been perfectly happy just being left alone and being allowed to just go ahead and eat the garden bed. And down here I still have plants that didn't get planted that they, they needed to be but just didn't work out this year which is fine for some of them. Back here I wanted to make sure I mentioned these because I had some people asking about them in the last garden tour. The Rainbow Sensation White Jellas. I wanted to talk about these in my fall planter video that I did I think the video prior to this one. We'll see how things pan out with scheduling and editing. I was going to talk about these being a great alternative for crotons. You can see they have absolutely beautiful variegated foliage. The variegation on them is more of just a uh, lightish yellow to a kind of a creamy green with a darker green in the middle and then as the nighttime temperatures start to cool moving into late summer early fall you start to get more of a tricolor variegation on the foliage. It's a nice shrub for some extra color in the landscaping. So I have two of these they're hardy all the way down to zone four and next year when this area gets planted up, this is where those will be going. Just didn't get around to it this year because I didn't end up doing what I was going to do with this area. But I went ahead and picked up the white jillas while I could because they were in clearance. So they were like $8 a piece. So I went ahead and was like, you know what, it's fine. They're hardy all the way down to zone four, so they will overwinter really well. I'll just go ahead and throw a frost cloth over them with some of my other plants. And then they should just pop right back open in the springtime. Being hardy all the way to zone four, I'm in zone six, they'll be pretty easy to overwinter, so it's not a big deal holding off on those until next year. Uh, these passion vines, those were supposed to go on each side of my gate here, one on each side so they'd grow up the fence, but the banana cannas, those took off so much that these didn't end up making it in the ground. And they are not hardy to zone four, so I will be giving them a prune and then I will probably go ahead and stuff them into the mulch pile that's going to be over here underneath these bananas. I cut these down to like two feet tall and then I just mulch the whole thing. So there's always a really nice big mound of mulch in this spot and I tuck plants inside that ball of mulch sometimes. If my bonsais go in there, sometimes I'll throw like elephant ear bulbs and stuff down in there too, just because it's a really nice warm spot and it's, it's just less I have to take inside and have to worry about. I may end up tucked in there. This is, I feel like it's a little bit too late to go ahead and plant those out. With plants that are only marginally hardy to my zone, so Technically, these passion vines I have here are really solid through zone 7. And I'm in zone 6, so I would prefer to plant these in the early spring or even early summer. Same thing with like crepe myrtles, elephant ears, cannas, all the plants that are only like kind of kind of cold hardy to where I live. I prefer for them to have a longer period of time to establish themselves down into the ground before having to go through their first winter. So if I were to put these in the ground right now, they just kind of hang out. They're not really going to do anything over these next few weeks before the frost comes in. So we're at this point, probably only a few weeks away from starting to have some frost. I just, I don't know how beneficial it would be to them. I think that they would be better protected inside a gigantic pile of mulch for their first winter, but I don't know. But actually I have a third, so I could go ahead and plop these in the ground and then put that other one in the mulch ball and just kind of call it an experiment. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know yet. I moved one of my queen palms down here just because it was kind of in the way down the other end of my patio. This is where that'll hang out for the next few weeks as well. It was down on the other end of the patio kind of like, it's been in the last few videos, just sort of hanging out in the middle because I enjoyed looking at it. But it was, it was in the way. I'll be talking more about what I'm doing with that palm as far as winter time goes. I'll talk about that in the next few weeks, but what's happening with it in the landscape. We'll talk about that next year in the springtime. This oleander that I've talked about in a lot of the garden tours is doing very well, but it was kind of all starting to move in one direction as far as its growth is concerned, so I pulled it where it's kind of opposite to the sun, so hopefully that'll help balance it back out. If not, that's okay because it's going to be going into the garage here and 
a little while. I leave the oleanders out longer. I usually don't bring them in until ish, November probably because they can take temperatures into the 20s and the teens. A little bit of frost isn't going to hurt them. My Natchez crepe myrtle did a lot of growing this year. Came all up from the ground. This died down to the ground last winter. So that's all in one growing season, but no flowers. Just wasn't getting the sun. There's not as much sun over here as there used to be. So uh, this crepe myrtle might be getting dug up next year, and then I might be moving it down towards, you can't even see it, but the garden window where those gingers and everything were that we were just talking about, that might be its new home. I really like the, the Natchez crepe myrtles have absolutely beautiful wood on them, which I know maybe sounds like an odd reason to plant something or to really enjoy a plant just for its wood, but as the wood on them starts to thicken out, it's really smooth and it's like a cinnamony, almost like a rainbow. It's, they're just absolutely gorgeous. I have some footage from a nursery that has one growing out here. I'll try and put the, is it there? Can you see it? I have no idea because I don't know where that footage is. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. And down here I'm starting to pull plants, move them forward and get them to where they're getting a little bit more light like this parlor palm over here. And there's a bird of paradise in the background, my fiddle leaf fig. Eh, I don't, I'm, it's not my favorite plant, but I keep it around just because it's so easy to take care of. In the wintertime I stick this in my garage. I don't even put it in the warm area. I just put it like in the dark and splash water on it every like month and it does fine. So yeah, the fiddly fig has become sort of a storage spot for my hanging cacti, my epiphyllums, my disso cactus, and my mounted orchids. This is just a spot with a little bit more light. So with it being fall, the sun is so much lower in the sky that it's only light out here until like two in the afternoon and then it's all shade. So I'm having to push things closer and closer to the edge of the pool because that's where the sun seems to hang out. Which isn't a big deal. I don't care. I enjoy having the plants out in the open where I can see them better anyways. This is the Cordelin Fruticasa Singapore Twist. I wanted to show it because I showed it in the last vlog. You can see here why it's called Singapore Twist. It has this awesome shape to it that's really similar to what you would see in something like a traveler's palm or the white bird of paradise. Just that growth that comes all out and flat and as it grows up the top growth kind of twists so if this were to hold its foliage then it would have like a spiraling pattern to it that looks really really cool in the winter time this lost a lot of its foliage because it is a mealy bug magnet i have never had a plant next to my areca palms that the mealy bugs love so much oh and hoyas i don't know if you've ever noticed there's a reason i don't have hoyas around here because the mealy i just can't handle the mealy bugs i don't like the plants enough to deal with the headache that comes with them but this one since it was low maintenance i was like okay you can stay and this year it should be easier to control those mealy bugs because i'm aware now <laughs> that they really really enjoy this plant so I'll know to be more preventative with keeping them off of it. And the laurel hedge, that's looking good. Not much has changed there. It's still a laurel hedge doing its thing, providing lots of privacy. Not really a ton to say about that. One thing that's kind of cool, my Adansoni, that's doing fairly well considering I really haven't done much at all with it this summer. Like, I mean, nothing, like barely anything. I made sure to put it in a spot where the drip irrigation hits it really well. And then I'm just like, you do you you need to survive i don't have time to mess with finicky plants right now but it seems to be okay with that that has started to stretch out and grow up along this berm it has vining pieces coming down and working themselves around everything so i'd say it's doing very well very well it just kind of took off didn't it it's growing all over the place it's everywhere, which does mean though that I need to give this a bigger support stake, something taller so it has more room to spread. So that's something I'll try and focus on when it's time to move the plant inside. It's creeping and growing along. You can see it's got its little roots starting to stick out here and go down into the soil, which I would prefer it actually doesn't do. And I am going to go through here and just gently lift it because I don't, I don't actually want this to actually root itself down very thoroughly because I don't want to have to tear the plant apart in a few weeks when it's time to move it inside. I've gotten some decent root growth out of some of those nodes on there though, so I could easily cut that up and start more of them. I don't really know why I'd want to because the one I have is already getting so big and it's going to take up a lot of space. It's fun to propagate things, so maybe I'll do that. I don't know. We will see. The mule palms, they're doing very well. I didn't get as much growth out of them this year as I usually do, and I really think that it's just because it's time for them to get repotted. Palm trees can stay in the same pot for a really long time but these just I repotted them last summer thought I had bumped them up like reasonably well into much 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 larger pots but 
they took off that year and just absolutely filled those pots out. So next year I'll be bumping them up into probably 30 inch containers, which means they're not going to fit in these blue containers anymore. If you didn't know, these are potted up in plastic pots. You can see that gray line there. And I just set those inside these big blue ceramic containers. I do that because the big blue pots are really heavy and uh, I don't want to run any kind of risk of breaking them. So I prefer to just leave them there all the time and put the plants in them. But once these mule palms are bumped up into 30 inch containers, yeah, that's not going to work anymore. So there will be uh, queen palms in these containers down here. And then the mule palms will find spots in the landscape. And I'll put a bunch of plants and things around their pots that they blend in better. Also saying all of this under the assumption and hope that maybe next year I'll be able to find 30 inch containers. I couldn't find any this year because all you gardening fiends went out and bought them all up. Who knows what next year will hold, but if I can repot them, I will. This is a limelight hydrangea. Something I really enjoy about these hydrangeas that some people don't like, maybe just because it represents the fall to them. But when the nighttime temperatures start to cool, these also, just like that Wigella I just showed, they get this really pretty blush pink outline on the edges of the flowers, and I think it's really pretty. I enjoy flowers that change as they age, instead of just kind of withering away, especially long-lasting flowers. This limelight's been in bloom since, like, late July, probably. And here we are, almost October, and it's still covered in flowers. In fact, the other hydrangea just put out some new ones, which is unusual. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Actually, probably very soon, because there's not a lot of updates to give with the berm. I do talk about this berm a lot in the garden tours, but there just, there isn't much else to say other than it's fall. The pedicits are starting to die back and the laurel still looks nice. Ah, uh, the hydrangea trees. One of my favorite parts of the garden. They're looking good. This is that time of year where they start to fizzle, but the pink in them is at its absolute Max. These are panicle hydrangeas. The vanilla strawberry is the variety name. They start off white and then they fade to this beautiful pink. And this is probably the most pink I've ever seen on the flowers before. Because normally what happens with these hydrangea trees is that they start to bloom. You can see they start off white. This one just randomly put out some new flowers, probably because I gave it kind of a late season pruning, which we're not really supposed to do, but it needed it, so I did it. So they start off white and then over time they start to get some pink on them and then the further and further the season goes they get more and more and more of this pink. Some of the flower heads on these are absolutely gigantic. I've seen them bigger than this before. Still they got really big and healthy this year. So what I was getting ready to say before though is that typically these will start to bud out for me sometime around July and then the heat of the summer comes around and they'll tend to get a little bit of damage on them and then the flowers they still look pretty throughout the rest of the season, but just not quite like this. We had a cooler summer. We had a few pretty hot days in July, but I don't think we even hit triple digits one time, which is extremely unusual. You normally have a few days in the hundreds, but I think the hottest day I can remember was like 98, maybe 97. And one of the perks of that is that the flowers, they're looking a lot better than they normally would. They didn't end up getting very much of the heat damage that they usually get. There's still a little there, but not very much. Uh, honeysuckle, this is the major wheeler. It's starting to put out some more fall flowers. One thing I really like about this honeysuckle, this honeysuckle usually puts on a gorgeous display of these fuchsia magenta e flowers with the bright yellow center. It'll be covered in those in the springtime. And then it'll take a rest and then it'll put out a few more flowers sporadically during the summertime. And then in the fall, it usually puts on another show. So it's just starting to uh, get those buds out. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, this will have more on it. It's still not gonna be covered in flowers as much as it is in the springtime, but it's just nice that it keeps putting out a few more every few months, like getting that three seasons of interest out of them. You kind of get four if it's a mild winter, they'll stay semi evergreen. Sometimes they'll have like an okay fall color. None of that really matters to me because I grow this one for the flowers. I think it has some of the prettiest flowers on them. And it's a honeysuckle so the pollinators really enjoy it too it's always nice having things around for the pollinators and here's some of the bonsais that were in a video i don't know not that long ago they're doing okay they're looking well i moved those back to the shade just so they they can adjust to their new environment a little bit better you know you have to work the roots on them so much i don't like to put them into sun until they've had some time to reestablish themselves i don't think 
this one's ever been in a video, so you guys, there's no updates to give with that one. It's just a bonsai that I really need to get on top of pruning and trimming. It's starting to kind of fall back into its natural form, so I need to get in there and clean it up and maybe do some wiring on it. I'm not sure. I'll figure that out at a different time. Cactus and succulents. They're doing well. I mean, there's not much to say about them. This Yucca Restrada I talked about one of the garden tours not too terribly long ago, and this one had some crown rot on it. I need to go through and cut that out. It's unfortunate that that happened, but it's putting out a new head from the trunk, so it's okay. It's nice that they do that because even though you lose that top growth, which is what I would prefer to keep on the plant, still, all is not lost. There's still a plant there growing. That is why I don't try and grow that one outdoors during the winter, because you saw that. That's from like one night below 20, it just went, pfft, gave up. Lespideza thumbergii, one of my favorites. It has these absolutely gorgeous long cascading branches that get covered, absolutely covered in these pink flowers. It did already max out on the blooms. It had more on there just a couple of weeks ago, but still it lasts for a few weeks, maybe a month or so. The butterflies and hummingbirds and bees absolutely cover this plant in the morning. And I just enjoy the plant in general. It's been so easy to grow. It's a very low maintenance woody perennial. It does take up a lot of space and it has an awkward growth. If you have this variety, which has almost a trailing habit, it really needs to be planted along a wall where it can come down and hang or up on a hill. There are varieties of these Lespedezas that do have more of a bush form to them. So if that's something you wanted to put in your garden, it would probably be a good idea to get one of those. If I were to do it again, I would probably maybe go for one of the bush form ones. I'm thinking about maybe ordering some to put along the back end of this fence here because they're so low maintenance. They don't really have many demands. They just grow and the pollinators love them. And I like having things out here that the pollinators go crazy for. So I think that might be just kind of nice to have that wall of flowers back there. Maybe, I don't know. I'm gonna, there's a lot of ideas for this area, but that's kind of on the back burner. I'm gonna think more about that next year. The citrus are pretty happy. This key lime over here has some flowers on it. They smell absolutely fantastic. Not the heaviest bunch of flowers for it, but it's still something and it's still fun. I love key limes. I've had lemons and oranges and all kinds of citrus and I've cut it back to only growing ones that I, I will actually use because like with the lemons, I, d I don't need all the lemons. Lemon trees, especially, you know, the Meyer lemons, they are so abundant. You get so much fruit out of them, which is great, but it's, sometimes it's too much. I've just noticed I use more lime than anything else. That's more about like mixing drinks and things like that. So that's my preferred citrus to be grown in the house. I don't know if we've ever talked about my lime before. There's not much to say, it's just a, it's a tiny little lime tree. One thing I just noticed that's pretty exciting and oh, you guys can't really see that. Look at that, better late than never. That's a ginger bloom. This is from the Bow Eye Red Curcuma. This got planted up back in, I wanna say May. I planted up these ginger tubers in a video and I was thinking they weren't gonna bloom this year, but we just didn't have a ton of heat, so they didn't get going very much. And you can see they're already starting to do their diebacks. I really wasn't expecting it to flower. I thought I, that this year was just going to be a dud for that. Maybe they'd go for it next year, but look at that. It's not the biggest flower, but like I said, better late than never. Oh, and I don't want to forget the pool pots. These, for me this year, highlight of the garden. I absolutely love how these turned out. The one over here to the left of those steps is a little bit more bare because that seems to be the pot that my dog prefers to run around and dry himself off on. But this one over here on the right, that one still looking pretty good. Petunias on this one are starting to fizzle, but that's to be expected. It's almost October. Given the time of year, not surprised by that at all. That's just kind of what they do. With these, I liked these so much that next year I will probably be doing something very similar, if not identical. The only thing I think I would change is that these more of magenta-y, darker pink flowers in there. Those are Supertunia Vista Paradise. I wasn't too crazy about them. I was hoping that they would have a little bit more vibrancy in them and they just, they really don't. So next year I will probably, where, what's happening with the sun? I liked how they played in with the Supertunia Vista Silverberries. They look very nice, but I still think I would prefer to probably just go with the Supertunia Vista Bubblegum mixed in there. It's just a lighter, kind of a more cheery, happy pink color. I think that would look better. And you can see here, we're ahead and fluffed it out so it shows a little bit better. That was a purple wave petunia. 
it they didn't they didn't stand up as well as the Super Junior Vistas. Not at all. It was looking great until like a week, maybe a week and a half ago, and it just started to like die off and burn out. I'll go ahead and get that cut out of there. Not looking too good there, but almost all of these, th those are gonna be gone pretty soon anyways. Because I need to get these Adenidia palms that are in these pool pots. Ones that I'm really, like, I don't even talk about them that much because what they're underplanted with is just so pretty and colorful. But I need to go ahead and get those ready to go inside. So that means I need to start getting everything cut out from down below because all these annuals, while they're beautiful, they are nutrient hogs and they're sucking all the good stuff out of that soil that I really want to make sure that these Adenidia palms are able to get into their system before going inside. So in the next week, maybe two, I'm going to be pulling all this stuff out from underneath them to get the palms ready to go inside. That's the last look of the pool pots for the garden tours. Filming right into the sun. That's fantastic. So that when I pull the Adenidia palms out, I will go ahead and drop a couple of queen palms in there. I'll leave them out into like the upper 20s usually and they'll be okay. They can handle light frost, so upper 20s, lower 30s. But the Adenidias, these these guys right here, can you even see them? The sun is so harsh. They don't like that. But I, at the coldest upper 30s, prefer to get them inside when nighttime temperatures are dipping into the 40s for a prolonged period of time. Yes, yeah, so those are definitely not going to be around for the October garden tour, that's for sure. Looked pretty this year. I really liked how they came out. The impatience that are in there, the sun impatience, got a little bit wonky. But that's to be expected when things get packed in so tightly. Sometimes that happens. Then these quarter ones that are in here, these fruticasas, you can't even see. These are the kiwis with that gorgeous green and pink variegated foliage. Those will be pulled out. I'll pot them up separately and keep them separately in my grow space during the winter time. And I also need to get all this stuff cut out of there because when I bring my plants in, I usually prefer to have them sprayed for at least two weeks before they go in the house. I'll just use an insecticidal soap or oil, but I'm not going to do that in a container that's full of flowers because, you know, we want to protect the pollinators. So those need to come out even if it's going to be a really warm October, which I don't know if it is. You just never know. All that stuff's got to get out of those pots anyway so that I can make sure to get them sprayed down and make sure that they're not covered in bugs when they come in the house. I'm trying to make sure to talk about the things that won't be around at the end of next month like this croton look at this croton look how big it's gotten this plant did so incredibly well this year i think it may have been in a vlog but i in the springtime i did top dress the container with some rich organic compost a little bit of slow release and it's on drip but it's just one little drip emitter the same one it was on last year but it still it grew so much more this year lots and lots of growth on here that i didn't see last year but it, it grew a decent amount the year prior, but I don't know. It was just really happy this year. It is still in its container. The container's just sunk into a hole in the ground. One thing though, I think it might be getting too big for this spot because it's starting to come over to a point where you have to sort of reach through it to get to the doorknob. I might, I'm not positive, maybe I will be able to dig its hole out further this way and scoot it over next year. I didn't do that this year because this big ginger clump is right here, but that ginger clump I also had divided up over the summertime, so there's a little bit more wiggle room. Maybe I'll be able to scoot it over a little bit next year. I really hope that's the case because I really, really enjoy having this plant here. As far as crotons go, this one hasn't been too finicky. Sometimes you'll get them and they just throw a fit when you move them inside. This one didn't do that last year, and I think that I had moved it to the shade like a week or two before moving it inside. My theory was that it would just be less shock to the plant, and it was. I've done that with other crotons before, moved them to a darker location about, you know, a couple weeks before moving them inside, and it just helped with them not dropping as many leaves. They're notorious for that. When you keep your crotons outside during the summertime and you move them in, then sometimes they just throw an absolute fit for a few weeks and they'll drop lots of leaves, but you know, you take good care of them, keep them watered, and give them plenty of light, and they'll flush out with new growth. I'm sure it will lose some foliage. That's just kind of what they do. But as long as I can remember, I don't want to forget that I need to scoot this someplace a little bit darker here in the next week or so. Because I don't want this out in anything below like, I don't know, 40 degrees or so, something like that. A lot of that does go back to what the daytime temperatures are going to be. So we'll have cool nights, but if it's going to be like 75 or 80 the next day, then I don't worry about it as much. We just have to watch the forecast. I'll be talking more about the winterizing 
process with everything and what I do to break the garden down and to get the plants ready to take inside and my vlogs throughout the month of October. Cause that's pretty much all I do in October is I'm prepping things, digging them up and getting them sprayed down. The whole process of getting them ready to move in the house for the winter time. Some more plants that have done very, very well. This whole corner over here, it's gotten very full. I had this rostrata here that I had to tuck over here because there's just not a lot of sun back here this time of year. So it's kind of in front of things, which isn't ideal, but it's all right for right now. Just don't want to stay that way for too long, which it won't have to because this Robolini, this pygmy date palm, that's going to be going off to the big greenhouse where the Alexander palm gets stored. So that'll be gone in the middle of the month. And I will maybe put something over here in my uh, fall planter video that came out. I think the video prior to this one, I talked about a big whiskey barrel planter that I have, and I wasn't sure if I was going to pop that one up. Or I may have edited that out of the video. I don't know, but you're updated. There's a whiskey barrel that I was debating planting up. I might pot that up and put that in this spot just so things look a little bit nicer out here. It's not going to be as pretty as having these beautiful Pakistakis, Ludia, or the Sun Impatience, or these gorgeous Caladiums. I'm going to get a close up on these Caladiums. Those did wonderfully this year. This is their second year, so their little bulbs were a lot bigger. They had more to work off of when they got going. I also wasn't sure about giving them quite as much light as they were getting over here, but they seem to appreciate it. I wasn't sure last year how much light to give them because I hadn't grown this variety before, but they seem to appreciate an okay amount of sunlight. And the foliage, it's really, this is, these are some big leaves for a caladium. There's, there's my hand. Look at how big this leaf is. You don't see that with caladiums very often. And it is, it's just covered in these gorgeous variegated leaves. Always plants that I try and make sure to highlight in these garden tours because it's just one of my favorite varieties. I always say it, I hate the name, frog in a blender that's gross but with that gorgeous variegated foliage and it's a nice variegation to its different shades of green a little bit of white in there some hints of white every leaf is fun and unique and again that's a softer variegation than say with like these sun impatience these tropical rose where it's more of a yellow color which i'm not really all that crazy about the yellow variegation i really prefer when it's softer like you get on these leaves here so that's what's going on over here in this area lots of growth on the plants the packet stackies is a little bit thirsty even though it just got water so i need to give that a drink like i was saying about that whiskey barrel though it's just a really big whiskey barrel i didn't plant it up like i usually do in my fall videos because it's it's really heavy and i didn't want to lug it around to my front yard but i think that that might be a fine thing to have over here in this corner when all these tropicals are gone i could pot that up right over here it'll be a good compromise that way i don't have to move it around to the front of the house and i can put just some nice fall annuals but i'm mostly going to focus on putting things in there that'll have some winter interest just because you know the whole pandemic that's going on right now not really having people over and in the house so uh, this is going to be a winter where i will probably be spending more time outside uh, you know, as in, in an effort to socialize with people. So I will want things to look nicer than normal. Cause usually in the winter time out here, I'm like, I don't care. I have a few planters out here just so things are green and look nice. But I don't put a ton of effort into making sure that it's like a warm, welcoming environment. Like there's usually some pots and lots of things that need to be cleaned up this year. I'm going to be more on top of making sure that things are cleaned up and looking nice so that again it's just sort of a nice space to be able to sit down and talk and socialize so having a little fall planter over there that'll look nice throw an evergreen shrub in it something like that kale and some cabbage i don't know figure that out when it's time to do that everything else like all these annuals that we're seeing in this pot here coleus and another sun impatience the heliconias i gotta lift all those out and get them ready for winter i'll keep some of my coleus the heliconias i'm gonna pot up and keep the sun patients those will go uh i have my alacaja ludia back here looking absolutely horrible you said we had a few cool nights so there's some foliage you need to cut off of there and go ahead and move that to a more protected spot because it's a little bit more sensitive to the cold than some of the other alocasias are that i have out here did i say alacaja before i'm so sorry bad habit alocasia i think we're up to date on everything that's at least going to be drastically different between now and next month. Gonna look really different out here at the next garden tour. Maybe a little bit messy because I will be out here doing a lot of messy, messy, messy things. Bananas might still be around. Sometimes those don't even die back until like late November. It just depends on the fall. It's totally unpredictable. But the big palm, that'll be gone. A lot of the palms will be gone and all the tropicals and everything it's just going to be a much more of a bare look out here and that's okay the garden did really well this year i'm really happy with 
everything and how everything turned out, especially considering the circumstances, not just the COVID, but just everything else that was going on. Have a whole new bed over there with the sable miners and the gingers. The patch over there with the sun impatience, the tradescantia and the lemon coral sedum, I think came out wonderfully. And this has been beautiful at nighttime, especially when those gingers were in bloom and those orange flowers kind of lit up under the lights. It was so pretty. And it's still pretty. There's still plenty of pretty days to be had. But as far as growth is concerned, probably just about peaked on everything. The plumeria that I showed before, I don't know what it's going to do. We'll just have to wait and see because the temperatures have cooled now that it's in bud. So it may just decide to say forget it and not open those flowers up. I don't know. Like I said, we'll have to wait and see. I know that there are like a lot of houseplants and tropicals that I didn't really get into. Those will be in all of the vlogs coming up over the next few weeks because those are the plants I'm going to be the most focused on. All the orchids, bromeliads, the stromanthes, and helicone. I mean, you can see they're everywhere. The tropicals are everywhere out here. So you don't really need to be part of the tour because you're going to be seeing a lot of them over the next few weeks. Lots of repots and things like that. Last minute things that didn't get done that I want to make sure are done before the plants go inside. Oh, the business Mark, yeah, didn't talk about this one. The Busy is doing well, opening up a new leaf. Happy little plant. Not that little. It's a, it has a good spread on it, but it's, you know, a minuscule little baby compared to what it's going to look like here in a few years. Oh, the mums. I had said I would update everybody on the mums in my last video where they hadn't bloomed yet. A few of them have bloomed, not all of them. This is the Stacy Dazzling Orange. It was in that Proven Winners video where I talked about the mums. Then it was also in my last vlog where I was planting up these fall containers. So this one's opened up more than any of them so far. They're classic, cute, fall-like flowers, but they have that open habit, which I really like on a mum. And then there's this pink Stacy mum that's potted up here in this pumpkin that was also, all the mums I'm about to show you were in that video. It's just getting going, getting these flowers open. Aren't they nice though, those pink flowers with the white and the yellow centers? Really happy and cheery. Maybe they don't scream fall to a lot of people, but I like them just because they're bright and vibrant. And just like I said, they're just happy flowers. The autumn sunset mum that it has, it's nothing's happened there. Unfortunately, I was really hoping that those would be open by the time I did this garden tour, but that, that one's taken its sweet time. And then the last one is the Key Lime Mum, which is one of the ones I was really excited about just because I love the green flowers. It's just so fun and unusual. They're just getting going. The flowers still have some opening to do. So far, the ones that have opened are teeny tiny, but I do think they still have some opening to do. So they should open up some more. I'll have all those things posted up on my social media. Like I said in that video, where I was potting up all the fall things. I think when those mums start going, I'll be taking a lot of pictures because those vibrant, colorful flowers make me so happy. And I still have a few fall planters left to go. So I'm gonna get started on those actually because I need my space. I need to be able to get through here and get back to things. That'll be the end of planters and gotta, gotta get started on getting things ready for winter. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's going wonderfully for you. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens? What do you gotta do in fall? I know a lot of you have already had to move your plants inside. That'll be the case here in the next few weeks too. And I look forward to seeing how much things have changed between now and October. So that's it. Goodbye, Summer Garden 2020. I'm not going to miss you. I'm ready to move on from this year. So whatever. Bye. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.